Hello. We all here, Chip? Are we ready to get started? You're all set. All right. Hello, everyone. Sorry for the brief delay. Thanks so much for joining us. I am here with my very hardworking conference team, uh, and I'd like them to introduce themselves. I'm Tara Barnes Darby, Director of Conferences at NMAC. Hello, I'm Allison McKeithen, Conferences Manager at NMAC. Hi, my name is Shantae Gray, and I'm the Meetings and Registration Coordinator at NMAC. Welcome. Great. So what we're gonna to do today is basically focus on the conference platform. As you all know, this is our first virtual conference and we have pivoted like everyone else has done as well. But before we get into that, I'd like to go over some technical tips. All right. So the platform has a recommended browser uh, for the, uh, the best and most optimal uh, viewing. Uh, Chrome is a recommended browser, so uh, please make sure that that's loaded on your devices and make sure that you have the most updated version of it. Okay, obviously you can see the, uh, the conference platform from a variety of devices, but to the extent possible, you know, a laptop, a desktop, or an iPad is recommended. Also, your internet speed. Check your internet speed. We actually have a tool for that on our conference login page uh, once you get that URL, uh, but we recommend that you have at least 25 megs of download speed to view the plenaries and the workshops and the Institute. And your internet connection. You know, most people use Wi-Fi, we know that, uh, but if you're in an office or you still have uh, network cables, that'll uh, ensure that you have uh, consistent connectivity, okay? All right. Well, let's start looking at the platform. Chip, I am ready to share my screen. All right. Hopefully everyone can see my screen. We're excited to show you our conference platform. You know, we're still, you know, like every conference, we're working down to the wire, uh, but this is the, the most recent version of it. We wanted to have some fun. We wanted to, instead of having just generic avatars, hopefully to kind of sneak some pictures in of some of our staff and our constituents. So to make it fun and uh, see if there's anyone that you know. Hopefully you see Paul and Shante. And Allison, we're all here in the lobby. But I just want to go, you know, both of them are going to go in detail with some of their um, the places where they actually live within the platform. But I just want to go over the navigation. So right here, uh, we it's fun. You know, we have quilt panels. Uh, you get to see all of your uh, some of your MX staff. Uh, but the, the purpose of this is basically to be the landing play, uh, the landing page and also the place for uh, navigation. So on the standing sign, you can click on the various labels to kind of jump to different spots. We are thankful to have our sponsors. You can also click on them to be able to advance to their individual booths or their website. But this is the spot, the conference footer, that'll kind of, you know, if you're lost, it follows you through each room. Uh, so whenever you're lost and you don't know where to go, just go to your footer. All right, so right here we're in the lobby. We click on here. This is the plenary ballroom, the place for all plenaries. So whenever it's time to review the plenaries, this is where you'll come. You'll click on here to access the, the scheduled sessions, and then there'll be a place to play it when that plenary has been activated. Workshops, this is essentially our breakout room. This is where you'll go here for all your um, institutes and your uh, workshops, and you can either click on live sessions, or on-demand sessions. 
And Allison's gonna go through that in detail. Or resources, this is basically where the handouts are for all the, the sessions. Halls, we'll have two halls. We have an exhibit hall and we have a job sphere hall. The job sphere hall is, we're excited about it, but it's still under construction. But let's go to the exhibit hall. So we have a scrolling hall. And what we're excited about is this background uh, that Stefan created for us. He is sort of our adopted uh, conference team member, uh, but we thought it was very timely. Um, and it just kind of adds to the conference space and gives us our own special sauce. So if you want to visit a, a particular exhibit, you'll click on one and you'll be able to see who's in the booth as well as have a chat with them. So that is the exhibit hall, lounge. Uh, just like our in-person conference, we have different lounges, a trans lounge, an over 50 lounge, youth lounge, as well as a person's living with HIV and uh, AIDS lounge. Uh, they are gonna be open from 12 to five on Monday and Tuesday. And Shantae is gonna, she's been working very closely with the coordinators and she's gonna give a lot of great information about that. The help desk. This is where you'll come to get help for anything, anything technical or anything program specific. Uh, we're working on changing this uh, label to just a general uh, help uh, label, but that's where you'll click to uh, open up a chat and ask questions, uh, the entire conference staff as well as the platform staff uh, will be there uh, ready to address your issue, okay? And this is a virtual swag bag, AKA the conference bag. We just wanted to give it a fun name, uh, but this is where you'll find our sponsors have preloaded a lot of information for you. Uh, so some of them are, uh, some of the items are already there. And if you want to download them to your conference profile, you'll click on them, you can view them while still staying in the conference environment. So there's a lot of information there. All right, so that's you know pretty much the you know, the uh, conference platform. We didn't want to make it a million rooms, uh, but there's a lot of functionality at the bottom. We actually have some sponsor messaging, um, but uh, we hope that you think it's fun. Um, and actually, uh, there's a way to click on attendees. You know, right now you'll see that there's only five people. But on conference day, you'll see a list of 5,000. <laughs> and you can click on it. If they have a, a green uh, chat uh, icon right there, they are available and logged into the platform, and you can start a chat with them. But uh, also, Shantae is going to go through that um, in detail. So I am going to pass it over to her. Shantae? Thank you, Tar. Let me just give it to one second to pull out. So uh, my name is Shantae Gray again. So you guys probably seen a thousand emails from me. Um, but thank you again for joining us. And I'll be going over the virtual lounges. Um, so as Tar mentioned, we have four lounges, the trans lounge, the 50 plus lounge, the youth lounge, and the people living with HIV lounge. Um, you will come to the lounge area. You could click on any of the four boxes. It will take you straight into the lounge area. Um, the lounge, um, the lounges are programmed. So they have a program going from 12 to 5, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we will send push notification of the programs that's coming up. But I want to give you just a little background on um, some of the things that's going on. So they have raw talk, spoken word, cocktails and conversation self-care, self-healing, um, valuable stories of women living with HIV. Um, they have games going on throughout the day, breakout session, uh, speaking the truth and 30 minute meals. So it's really planned to be laid back and very fun. 
If you have a chance, please stop in. Please stop by to say hi. They'll be help, happy to have you guys join. Next. Allison. <laughs> Giving it a quick second so it can load up. It's getting stuck. So I'll be going a little over the registration. Um, Tara went over it a little bit um, earlier. So everyone receive a wel will receive a welcome logon email tomorrow. Friday. Um, in the email, it will tell you how to log on. Um, you could use this link. Don't worry about writing it down because it will be in your email. Uh, once you click on the link, you can go to uh, click and enter your email address. Um, if you're already registered, and this only work if you're already registered for the conference, um, please enter your email address. Use the email address that you use when you register because that's just what the system will recognize. Once you enter your email address, um, click on the red log inbox and it will bring you into the virtual conference platform. Please note that on-site registration will open Monday, October the 19th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and as I should say, it's free registrations for people living with HIV AIDS, people on PrEP, activists, community organizers, students, people working or volunteering in nonprofits, community-based organizations, tribal nations, um, health departments, health, health centers, et cetera. Uh, but per federal regulations and request a Center for Disease Control, MI cannot offer free registration for federal employees. So if you are a federal employee, please know that the fee is $250. Uh, once again, if you're already registered for the conference, you do not have to register again. And here's a short video of how to uh, register, how to log on. So you would go where the email is, put in your email address, click on log in, click on this white button. And it will take you into um, the lobby. And Tara has already gone over everything in the lobby. Technical support. So we're happy to have, so of course this is virtual. Um, this is our first time. So we will have technical support available from um, nine to six on Monday, 11 to six on Tuesday, and 11 to three on, for, on Wednesday. Um, you can, technical support is for, um, it's almost like the help desk. If you have any issues with accessibility, the workshop, the resources, technical issues, sound problems, anything related to the conference, we can help you. Um, and we'll show you on the next slide how to um, get in contact with us. Um, if you have any um, emergencies, you can contact conferences at mac.org. So you can click on the help desk. It will take you to this site. Um, you can click on technical support. And it'll bring up the um, chat box. You can type in any problems, any issues of what's going on um, in this box. And it will um, alarm any of us in the technical support team. And we will get back to you as soon as possible. Please note we have about 6,000 people. So on Monday, it may be a little bit longer than usual. But we will make sure that we answer every question that comes into technical support. Also, we have the chat function. Um, this is a way to um, talk to your colleagues, talk to your friends, talk to the people that you have not seen in so long in the field. So down here, um, we have a chat function at the bottom of the screen. You can click on chat. 
as you can see at the bottom, and this uh, a pop up will come and you can select the person you're looking for. Um, you could do a search and their name will come up. And then you could type in the information or you could say hi, anything that you want to reach out to your colleagues, friends. Um, you can also select several people. So if you want to do all of your staff um, in one group chat, you can do all of your staff. Uh, but this is a way for us to network, to talk, to share information. Um, also, it can be translated into English, Spanish, any language, actually. Um, so I think this is very important. Please, please, please check out the chat function. I think you guys will be super excited about it. Okay, next. Now I will pass it on to Allison and Keaton. Hello, everyone. So I'm here to show you how to get to the information and, and the places where you'll get just all the educational stuff. This is what you came to USCHA for. This is what we're known for. It's our institutes and our workshops. So I'm gonna go over where to find workshops and institutes. I'll give you an explanation between the live and the on-demand versions. And then we'll go over the resources and show you where to find those things. All right. So you start in the lobby and there are two places to get to the workshops here. You can go through the meter board right here on the right, or you can go down to the menu bar at the bottom. We're gonna select the menu bar at the bottom. So here you see our live sessions. Our live sessions are happening during the 19th through the 21st and we'll have the live Q&A portions at the end. On demand are our pre-recorded workshops. They'll be available after the live sessions, but the Q&A won't be included until we're able to upload them the next day. So you'll see here the live button is not activated yet because we have a countdown until when it's live. And when in five days from that particular time, we'll have that uh, live session activated. You'll be able to ask your questions of the presenters upon the completion of the playback of the pre-recorded session. For anything that you're interested in, you can click on the swag bag and have it added to your swag bag. The searching functions allow you to look by the session time or the date so that you're able to find anything on that particular day. Also, if that doesn't help you find what you're looking for, you can search by keywords. So you can up, look up if you want to find topics on Black, if you want to look up the, the presentation in Espanol, you can do that as well. You can search for anything covert related. So feel free to use that search function at the very top to find those topics that you're most interested in. And when you find it, go ahead and click add to your swag bag. Once you add it to your swag bag, it'll give you reminders to let you know that that presentation is about to happen. So anything you're interested in, go ahead and put it in there. Similar to live, the on-demand lists all of the presentations. You can search for them by the time, the date, you can look at the session time, and when you pull it up, it'll pull up everything that falls under that particular timeline. As you'll notice, they're scheduled. You cannot, activate those or view them until you until the time um, after the live presentation happens. So you just want to look for that countdown and be aware that those aren't going to be available until that time. But you can add it to your swag bag. So they'll give you a reminder to let you know that that on-demand session is going to be um, coming up soon. So if you're viewing one session live and doing Q&A, you can put it in your swag bag to view it later so that you don't miss anything. And here's our resources tab. Our resources will have all of the present PowerPoint presentations and handouts. But now we're gonna show you how to look at your on-demand sessions. You go down to that launch button when it's ready and it'll take you into a separate room. Once you get there, you'll go ahead and click enter and enter your workshop room. And then you'll see the presentation starting to play for you. The PowerPoint that they're using will show up on the left and any other resources they, they sent in will be showing on the right. You can make the screen bigger to view full screen or watch it at regular view. And then once you click out of there, it'll take you right back to the workshop room and the selections of, of workshops on demand.
So now I'll show you about continuing education units. Very important, a lot of people come to get these credits. And the best thing about this year is that we're able to offer a lot. So you can access the CEU information through the help desk. When you get into the help desk room, you'll notice there's a CEU screen. Once you click on there, it'll open up a window where you can see the CEU information. Go ahead and view that document or add it to your swag bag. Once you get in here, you'll notice that we have CHES credits offered and we're offering 58 entry level continuing education context hours. And to do that, you'll have to complete the survey at the completion of, at, of the workshops, enter your name, email, and CHES number. For George Mason University, we're offering 8.2 CEU units that you can apply for online. Click on the link and it'll take you to George Mason University. Scroll down to 2020 USCHA and go ahead and fill out the information they're requiring in order to purchase those CEUs. Then you can just hit the back button and get right back into the platform. So now I'm going to invite Tara back to give you the rest of the information about our presentations. Great, thanks, Allison. I wanted to go over briefly the plenary session. So we'll have a total of four plenary sessions. Uh, the first one is on Monday uh, from 12 to one. The opening plenary is Family Reunion 2. And I know in a lot of the communications that we've sent out, uh, we've noted that uh, we've gone back to that theme you may remember the first time that we had it was in 2017. Uh, and we figured, you know, 2020 kind of warrants another family reunion. So this is a different plenary for us. We are, you know, you're used to having our a certain keynotes or our, our long speeches, but we thought the purpose of this was definitely to check in with our constituents from around the country to kind of see how they're doing. So they definitely uh, responded back with uh, different videos of what's going on in their community. We also have a, a focus on Black Lives Matter and what's going on in our country right now. So we think that uh, it'll, it'll be well received and we hope you like it. Uh, later on that evening, the Gilead Plenary is on focusing, uh, creating a different world. Uh, they have a lot of things uh, planned and some uh, interesting and uh, some interesting speakers and moderators uh, planned for the session as well. On Tuesday, Vive is having a plenary on how arts and culture can spark change and combat stigma. And the closing plenary is our federal plenary. And we have a number of, of speakers from CDC, HRSA, SAMHSA, um, the Office of AIDS Research, as well as Dr. Fauci. And uh, that's it for the plenary sessions. And thank you. So we wanted to devote some time to Q&A. Chip, actually, I'm not sure if we're going to go to Kim first or we're going to do our Q&A now. We can just go right to Q&A. Because um, okay. <clears throat> uh, we have a few already. Uh, one second. One person asked, what are the actual hours of the conference? The hours of the conference are uh, pretty much 12 to 6 every day, uh, but you can find the exact hours on our conference website, uscha.life. It's not the okay. same day. So we're starting, yeah, so the, on Monday, I believe it's uh, 12 to 6.30. Um, 11. Actually, yeah, it goes later because we have a reception. Go ahead, Shante. It's Monday, it's 11 to 6.30. Yes, mm -hmm. we have some pre-sessions, uh, uh, but the actual uh, conference starts at, at 12. But again, see that exact agenda on uscha.life. Okay. Uh, we've had several questions about, will the PowerPoint that this webinar be available? And I just let everyone know that this webinar is being recorded. It will be available on the USCHA website tomorrow. So if you 
uh, need to look at it again or need to share it with someone who couldn't be there, it will be available tomorrow on the website. <clears throat> Uh, question is, is, is there, are you able to change the font size of the toolbar at the bottom of the screen? Uh, what you can do is for the entire platform is to zoom out to make everything larger. I know that on mine, I have a, a, desk, a PC, so you can just uh, control plus sign to make everything larger. Okay. Uh, are there any competitive games where you win items? Yes, we didn't cover that, but we are, uh, we do have some gamification. Uh, there are some games through the leaderboard. Uh, we are putting the final touches on that, as well as uh, some um, hide and seek functions. Uh, so we'll be uh, sharing more about that through our push notifications next week. Um, can you review again how to add a win win prizes? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Tara. <laughs> no problem. Um, can you review again how you add a workshop to your swag bag? Sure. Oh, go ahead, Allison. Mm -hmm. Sure. So as you scroll, when you see a title that you're interested in, there'll be a red briefcase to the far right of that title. And that's what your swag bag is. It looks like a briefcase. We don't have an actual, you know, like a better looking swag bag icon, but it's a red briefcase. You just simply click on it. And once it grays out, that means it's in your swag bag. You'll be able to go to your profile, open up your swag bag and view it there. There's also a swag bag icon on your toolbar at the bottom. Okay. Uh, like what is the register? <laughs> Sorry, Tara, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, what if you registered but now cannot find the confirmation email? Um, you can send me an email, sgreat at mac.org, and I can resend your confirmation email. Uh, will the job fair have opportunities for seniors and university who will be graduating next year? We can definitely ask the individual exhibitors. Uh, you'll be able to see them um, as soon as you register. Um, as soon as you log into the platform on Monday, uh, but there are a number of jobs. The individual can uh, address that. Will there be an app for this year's event? No, we don't have a conference app this year. Everything is done through the platform. Uh, are the sessions are there sessions going to be in Spanish? Allison, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we do have a track in Espanol where we'll have um, a few workshops that are presented in Spanish. All of our plenary sessions will also be in Spanish. Okay. We've had a couple of questions about the times. Yes, all the times for the conference are Eastern time. That's correct. They're in Eastern time. Uh, can you show us how to navigate to program ag the program agenda again? Actually, Chip, before we go to that, you know, we say that things are, are in Eastern time, but it's not like we're closing down the platform. Um, so if there are things that you want to see later on, or if you're in the West Coast, the platform is still open. We're just not actually staffing it overnight. And Chip, can you repeat that question? About the agenda. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they're asking how to navigate to the program agenda again. Yes, so we're going to be uploading the program book uh, to the website. So you'll be able to go there to get lots of information. And we're also going to be adding a, a, an agenda. So we didn't click on that because it hasn't been uploaded yet. But it's accessible through uh, that standing sign that's in the lobby. Uh, since we pre-registered, did we receive a confirmation email prior? No, the confirmation emails will go out tomorrow morning. And these are the confirmation emails for the platform that's showing you how to actually log in. The general registration confirmations went out as people were. A uh, couple of comments here. One, I am so excited for this conference. Thank you for the great explanations. Mm -hmm. um, not a question to the comment. Thank you so much. I know how hard y'all are working. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Um, 
can we load videos and our PSAs to show at booths? Yes. Yeah, so if you you purchased a booth, you should have received an email from me as well as instructions on how to upload things to your booths. So yes, you can definitely upload video. And if you have questions, please send me an email uh, afterwards. My email address is tbarnes, T-B-A-R-N-E-S, at nmac.org. Okay. Uh, next question. Can we share any meeting social media? Uh, I will say yes, please do. And uh, please use the hashtag of hashtag 2020 USCHA for all of your social media posts. Um, I don't meet any of the criteria with any of the lounges. Can I still wander in and take a look? Of course. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what well, is the email I address? Oh, I'm sorry, Tara, go ahead. I know, I keep adding things. We mm -hmm. also want to say, though, that the um, the lounges are, are Zoom lounges, so we are uh, very, uh, it's important to us to make sure that we create a safe space for all of our lounges. So we're not going to allow any type of uh, harassment in there. Uh, there will be monitors in all the lounges to um, kick people off if necessary. So we just want to reassure people about that as well. And throughout the uh, what platform. Is the email? Mm -hmm. What is the email address to get a copy of registration? Um, sgray at mmac.org. If you look at the slide, all of our contact information is there. And to reach us all at one time, conferences at mmac.org. That comes to all three of us. Uh, when will the program book be available? Tomorrow. <laughs> it will be available tomorrow. So you can have it to look over over the weekend and going into Monday. Um, I think I have an incomplete question here. Uh, so uh, whoever asked this question about how are Spanish speaking going to know? Uh, can you finish that question, please? I don't think it's a completely. <laughs> uh, Allison, someone wants to know where you got the read. <laughs> It's so popular. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was big lots. Big lots. So hopefully you have one near you. Um, oh, so uh, what's up? Spanish-speaking attendees will have different logins. No. So the Spanish-speaking sessions are in Spanish. So you'll they'll be listed with with all the other workshops. So you'll see them in Spanish. Um. We don't have a special website or anything. Those, those, everything is with um, the workshops as 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 they're listed in the platform. Uh, let's see. Do you need your registration confirmation to get on the platform? No, you just need your email that you use to register, and that would get you on the platform. Uh, website address again, I'm assuming that's asking for the conference platform website, but that will go out tomorrow's email, correct? Correct. Uh, do you need your general registration confirmation on the platform? I think that's still a no, correct? No, you need your email address. Uh, Shante, what's your email address again? Someone's asking for it. <laughs> sure, no problem. So it's listed down below us. Um, my contact information is sgray at mac.org. Also, I've seen someone put it inside the chat box. So you can check the chat box as well for my email address. Uh, comment, congrats, NMAC. It's a great job. Thank you. Thank um, you. Can, can we change exhibitor's name? Uh, are you referring to the person uh, that's at your booth or are you referring to the changing the name of a, a company? Uh, so we'll they can clarify that. That would be great. <laughs> um, how soon can we go on the platform? And yeah, I'm assuming they're talking about changing their booth reps names. Yes, that's that can be all be done on the day of the conference um, in the booth rep dashboard. So if you're um, the main person should have received an, uh, a video from me, an email that contains a video, 
on how to do that. And if you haven't been able to do it yet, it's because the registration system, registration is not open yet. So on Monday, you should be able to do it. Um, how soon can we go on the platform and start looking around? Monday. Um, how long after the main conference will the platform be open to view additional sessions? It'll be open for one year. Um, can exhibitors change the booth contents once the conference site is live? Yes, you can. Uh, let's see. Can you give us the website address again so we can rewatch this? Uh, I can handle that. It's the USTHA website. It's USTHA.life. So we'll put that in the chat box for you. Uh, are the lounges Zoom formats so we can see people that are in them? Yeah, so you'll be able to see people um, in there and you'll be able to chat um, just as well inside the lounges. Um, at what point can employers post positions for the job fair? So for the job fair, uh, you should have been registered. Um, so we have the posts for those positions. Um, so I know that Shante has sent out an email to those that signed up for the job fair, the, the organizations that are participating. Uh, so hopefully you've received an email from her uh, so that we can uh, put that information at your booth. Right. Uh, next question, uh, any 12-step meetings? We do not have any 12-step meetings um, this year. I'm sorry about that. Uh, what is the difference between open exhibit hall and live hour? So the exhibit hall is going to be open for the most part like on the, those first two days uh, from one to five and actually on the third day from one to two. Uh, but we have a time in the agenda where we're encouraging all the exhibitors to actually have their, their booth uh, representatives actually at their booth. Uh, so, you know, from one to five, they may not actually be at the booth, but of course it's accessible, but uh, that's what a live hour is where we're encouraging everyone to actually, the representatives to be there so that they can ask questions and engage with you. Um, is there an age range for the youth lounge? Yes, the age range is 18 to 24 years old. Um, participants will not be able to record any sessions due to copyright issues, correct? This yeah, so we're asking that people not record, but the recordings are available. You can view them at any time on the platform. Uh, let's see. Uh, is audio call-in recommended for the platform as well for audio issues? Audio call-in? No. So we won't... Go ahead, Jim. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Tara, that we've had a couple of people having sound issues on the webinar today, and I've encouraged them to use the phone call in because it's a little bit better. They're asking, so people are asking, should they use a phone call in line for the conference platform to get around audio issues? So just give you a little background on why they're asking that. Oh, okay. Uh, but just to answer that question, we don't have a phone line for the, the conference platform. Um, but if Are you, have you audio, to audio issues while you're in the platform, uh, definitely click on that uh, to help us so they can help you troubleshoot. Uh, are you willing to share the companies you use to create the conference presentation, facilitate Zoom platform performance? Are we willing to share the companies that we use to create the workshops and the recordings? Is that, is that what you said, Chip? Yes. Uh, the, the other question was, uh, are you willing to share the companies used to create the, I'm assuming just create the platform for the conference? Oh, okay. I thought the question is, <laughs> created the workshops or how them <laughs> uh, along with the presenters? <laughs> there is no company for that. Uh, but uh, the platform is Communique. Um, 
Uh, so it's a, a combination of two companies that we use is Communicate and Six Connects. And if they have any follow-up questions, they can email us at conferences at mmac.org. Um, maybe I missed it, but there is a trans lounge this year. Correct. Um, are there CEUs for social workers? Unfortunately, we were not able to offer CEUs for social worker this year. Uh, somebody's asking if the platform is open at 9 a.m. on Monday to look around. Yes. Will there be any other conferences for the rest of 2020? <laughs> We do not have any other conferences, but we I know that our public policy team has a Hill Champions event, and you can go to MAC's website uh, to get more information on that. Uh, is there going to be a designated time to visit the job fair, or are we free to go during the set hours of 11 to 6? Uh, you'll be able to go during the... Um, from 11 to 6. The job fair um, time that we put there is similar to the exhibit hall live hours. So it'll still be visible for you, um, even if the representatives aren't there in their individual booths. Um, follow up on that. What's the format or process for participating in the job fair? Sure. So it's anyone who's registered for the conference can participate on it. It'll be, if you remember the uh, the navigation that I did, you'll click at the bottom halls. There are two halls that are listed, the exhibit hall and the job sphere. So you'll just click on job sphere and it'll be a, a similar scrolling hall. Um, so you just click into an organization's booth um, to be able to view the listings. And we've asked them to provide a Dropbox so that they can collect resumes. And that information will be there as well. Uh, is there a charge for CEUs? For the CHESS credits, there is no charge. For the general CEUs, there is a $50 fee for those CEUs. Um, can we request exhibitors send info to info, et cetera, to us? Yes, so the exhibitors have a way of uh, capturing the email address of everyone who has um, uh, visited the booth, uh, so they're able to download your information. And will there be a chat feature for the workshops? There's not a chat feature where you can like interact with the other attendees, but there is a Q&A function. So you can ask questions during the workshops of the presenters. Uh, Shantae, this is a registration question. Um, if a representative from an organization identified several of the staff as attendees when registering, Will all the attendees listed in the registration receive an email tomorrow, or will the email just be sent to the individual who completed the registration? The email will be sent to everyone who um, registered with an email address. So yes, everyone would get an email. Are there CEUs for peer support specialists? We are not offering that, that specific um, delineation of CEUs, we're offering community health education specialists, and then we're offering a general CEU through George Mason University. It would be up to you to ask your credentialing organization if they will accept those general CEUs, um, but not we're not offering those specifically. So I would definitely check with them if they will accept general CEUs from George Mason University. And one more question at the moment. Um, I want to go to all of the session, sessions as you have so many good ones planned. With them being recorded, is there any limit to the amount I can view? It's unlimited. View all of them, please. They're, they are actually some very, they're some very excellent presentations. So, I mean, fill up your swag bag, 
view all of them on demand. I mean, you have a whole year to watch them. So please go in and see them. I mean, we really have some great stuff this year. Yeah, I'd like to add, I mean, that's, you know, we're kind of bummed about not being able to meet in person, but that's definitely one of the pluses that's come out of this, you know, you know, an in-person event, you're limited to um, just attending that one session at a, a time, but you can see all of them and you can, you have a whole year to do that, so. And our credentialing organizations have made it so that you can't get credits for every single session. So take advantage of that, fill out those, those uh, evaluations so you can get those credits. So take advantage, you can get a ton of credits here. Okay, uh, really nice comment. Thanks so much, this platform looks great. Your efforts are greatly appreciated. So excited to attend this virtual conference because I've never been able to attend previously. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Um, Welcome to USCHA. We're glad you're, you got a chance to attend. Uh, will the swag bag be organized where saved sessions will be in order? Not sure, actually. That's a great question. I'm not sure how they'll be organized once they get inside the bag, but they'll definitely be there they are going to be timed. So if you have a workshop that happens, um, I don't know, let's just say example, if you have one that start, starts in session one, um, it will show that it starts in session one um, and it'll give you a reminder that it starts at that particular time that session one starts. So there will be some timed element to it because it sends you reminders based on what you put in there, but how it is viewed in the bag, I don't want to speak specifically on that, I'm not sure yet, but it will show you um, a countdown to when that particular uh, session will start or be available. And it looks like it's organized according to when you put them in your bag. Thanks, Stephen. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have to put sessions in the swag bag to view the sessions after the three days? No, you have one year to uh, view it. No, you can still go to the same um, section. So you can click on workshops um, to be there and the, you'll see that the, for the most part, they'll all be on demand. You don't have to download them to your, your swag bag. Uh, is there a way to share with new staff hired after the conference? resources you can share. So if you share, if you put the resource in your swag bag, you can download it to your device. Anything that you can download, you can absolutely share out of the platform. And the, the conference will be open. So if after this time they register, um, they should be able to access that, access the conference and be able to see those workshops if they're not government. <laughs> Uh, similar question before, uh, do you need to add sessions to swipe back to the on-demand sessions after the conference is over? No. no. Um, how do we get back on the platform to watch on-demand workshops? Just log back in and they'll be in the workshops room waiting for you to watch. Okay, so at the moment, that was the last question. Uh, I don't have, any, don't have any others in the box right now. Okay, so are we switching to Kim? Yeah, so um, for those of you who got iPads through our program, we're going to do a quick training for the iPad folks. So if you do not have an iPad, we are, we are done with this presentation. <laughs> um, so we will have, so uh, if you did not receive an iPad, Feel free to drop off uh, unless you have additional questions, and uh, we will uh, proceed with that training. So let me, Damian, I'm making you a presenter, so welcome as a presenter. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.
Hello everyone, uh, I'm Damian Cabrera. I'm the program manager for the treatment division. Um, Chip, is Kim online? Yes, yes she is. Okay, awesome. Um, so in this part of the presentation, we basically want to give you uh, to those that received the award of the iPad and, um, hello Kim. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> the <know> iPad. <laughs> <laughs> the iPad and the hotspot, basically to walk you through first the, the process and why we decided to, to do this and how was the selection process. And also Kim will give you uh, an idea or, or troubleshoot uh, any issues that you might have with the iPads or with the hotspot and any details that um, we might have and also to open up for, for questions. So um, first of all, I wanted I want to talk to you about why we did this. So um, as all of you know, NMAC leads with race and racial justice is very, very important to us. And for the one part, we have a conference that has a lot of information specifically this year that is not only about COVID, but also focus on racism given the all the uh, issues that we have seen throughout this year, the violence and everything. So for the one part, we have a conference that's very informative, uh, that is free for everyone that's accessible. But on the other part, we recognize that there is a digital divide and there is many people that not necessarily have access to the internet or even that have a device to attend USCHA. So for that reason, and thanks to our sponsors at Gilead, we were able to identify some funds to give uh, iPads and hotspots uh, to attendees uh, who were in need and that needed these devices to actually um, attend the, the conference. And to mention just a little bit about how the selection process was, well, basically um, we, um, we, we decide some, some scores based on if the person has great access to the internet, has great access to a device, um, and the employment status, and also if the attendees, if the uh, applicant has an actual plan of how are they going to use not only the, the information on, that they receive on USCHA, but also um, the device, you know, how is, is that going to play in passing that, that that information and we just also we also want to um, mention that these evaluations the review of these applications were performed by members of our cap and not and no nmax staff um, was involved in scoring these these applications and making um, final decisions so after going through all that evaluation process um, we uh, have some demographics. Can you all, uh, I guess you can see my screen. Um, and these are the, de the demographics of the people. Let me, give me just a second. Okay, there we go. Uh, so these are the, the demographics. As you can see, they are spread out um, most of the, a great amount of states in the United States, including uh, Puerto Rico. And in terms of the people that were chosen, that were scored throughout uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the evaluation, we are very happy because we understand uh, that the devices went to the people that actually needed it the most. And as you can see here, in, in the yearly personal income, most of the recipients uh, have a, a, a yearly income of less than 15, followed by a range of 15 to basically 30,000 a year. And in terms of employment, most of the uh, those that receive the award were, were not employed. And in terms of HIV status, and obviously um, USCHA being a conference about HIV, most of the of the uh, iPads went to people that are uh, positive, and we also got to gather some data of those who are negative and those who are negative on PrEP, as you can see in in the in the graphic. In terms of age, we have a variety, uh, a big range of 
age, most of them are in the range of 51 years old to 60, followed by 31 to 40 years old and, 40, and 21 to 30. And in, term, in terms of gender identity, most of the recipients uh, were male, uh, cisgender male, cisgender female, and also we have a transgender woman, two spirit, and gender queer. And in terms of sexual orientation, most of the recipients are heterosexual uh, or gay. And we also have people who are bisexual, queer, pansexual, and other. And in terms of ethnicity, um, most of the recipients are either African-American or Latinx, followed by white, other races, and American Indian, Alaskan Native, or those who prefer not to to disclose. And we think that it is important to, to show you this information because um, for us it's important to show that the process, uh, we try to, we put an effort to make it as transparent as possible. And also to, you know, to reiterate that um, they went to people who needed it the most. And now I am going to pass it over to um, Kim, who is going to talk to you some more details about the devices and the technical aspects. Hi, everyone. My name is Kim Farrell, and I'm the operations director for NMAC. Um, I just want to again congratulate everyone. We are so excited that you're able to join our first virtual USCHA. If anyone's on the call that has not received their package, just give me a, send me an email and I'll do the tracking for you and let you know what's going on with it. So when you got your package, you received a iPad, a keyboard, and a hotspot. And I wanna talk a little bit more about the hotspot. So the hotspot should have arrived activated and it had your user instructions and how to get your um, password. So when purchasing uh, hotspots in this large quantity, we purchased 120 devices and Wi-Fi that Verizon partnered with a company called Kajit. And that's the, comp the name that you see come up when you um, try to connect your iPad to your, hot to your hotspot. Um, so the hotspots don't have unlimited data. They are not individual data, it's data bought in a bulk. And, and it's all shared between all of you all that are using the hotspots. What we did do is purchase enough that you should have at least three months uh, worth of uh, data to use. And this is always gonna depend on your individual usage. So um, what we did do though, and what we have the capability of doing was we did limit the daily amount until after USCHA, just to ensure that you have enough to get through the conference. Once the conference is over, the remaining data will be uh, divided and distributed amongst everyone that you can use uh, as you wish. So just a little bit about data to, to know that um, if you're using your data for, if you're using your iPad for um, searching the internet or checking emails, that is very limited data. You don't use a lot during those times. But if you use your iPad for streaming movies, videos, or um, streaming music, that's when it's gonna use up a lot more data. So just keep that in mind when you're uh, using your iPad. It's Wi-Fi and it can be connected to any Wi-Fi. Uh, if you're out you know, at Starbucks or something like that, you can use it at that time. All uh, your hotspots can be kept afterwards. It can be used with any Verizon network if you wish to continue purchasing data on your individual hotspots. Does, um, that's about it. Does anyone have any questions? Chip? I also wanted to mention that if anyone needs assistance in Spanish, me pueden escribir un mensaje a cabrera at enmac.org y con mucho gusto le, le, le podremos asistir también. And also feel free to contact um, myself for any technical uh, help. I've been helping a couple of people so far. It's been wonderful talking with you all. Uh, you can reach me at kferrell at enmac.org. Okay. Hi, I'm just I'm just responding to someone's question. So let me uh, let's see. Uh, will the hotspots continue to work after the conference? 
Yes, you, you'll have be able to use it after the conference. Again, it um, the data will be divided amongst everyone, and you'll have hopefully at least a couple of months. Again, it depends on how you use it and how much streaming you do, but you will be able to use it after the conference. Uh, someone's saying they can't get on the hotspot. Tim, do you want me to give them your email for help on that? Yes. Okay. I can't get past the hello screen. Um, I will, uh, let me, I'll put, if you have technical issues, I'm gonna give you Kim's email in the chat so you can reach out to her with any issues. Um, uh, my hotspot is active, but says there's a Wi-Fi issue, I will email you. Uh, can you write your contact information? Yes, that's in the chat. Uh, I'll put Damian's in there. Uh, in case you have questions for him. Uh, uh, how to get the GoToWebinar on the iPad? Uh, you don't need GoToWebinar for the for the for the conference. Um, that's on a that's on a, a web-based platform, so you don't need to, you don't need you won't need GoToWebinar for that. You can just go to the uh, address that comes in your confirmation email. Um, Kim, it looks like there's several people asking about troubles with the hotspot. So I think there are several people having problems with that. Okay, so um, for the hotspots, there was an issue. The company resolved it. If you turned it, your hotspot on yesterday or any time prior to last night, um, please turn it off and then turn it back on because so that it can re um, re re. Uh, update the software and then it should work then. If that's still not working, then definitely just send me an email. Uh, let's see, one second here. Somebody's that. Uh, uh, Ms. D, yes, we can see you. What's your question? I didn't hear you, Chip. Uh, somebody's asking a question, asking if they can see the question. So I'm just wondering what, asking what their question is. Oh, they didn't have a question. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Was video on the early conference, no video on the present conference. Uh, let's see, Sean, are you, you're in, can you, Sean, can you see uh, Damian and Kim? Sorry, I'm just ask, answering their questions as they come in. Um, uh, how do I turn off the Sentinel web filter? Uh, Sentinel's blocking access to my email domain. Uh, it's blocking because it's an entertainment site. Um, that I don't know. <laughs> yeah, those type of questions, there, there should be an, on the, um, little card in your hotspot it should be some technical a technical assistance number if not um feel free to email me and we'll figure all of those things out uh do you know how much hotspot service will cost or how we can get in touch with the provider i'm assuming that means if you want to continue it on past the the time frame that we have no, it would be whatever Verizon offers. Okay. Any more questions, anyone? Uh, so far, no more questions. Um, is there anything uh, else anybody wants to 
anybody else wants to get wants to go into? Yeah, Damiana, Kim, do you have anything else you want to share with them? No, that's it. Um, enjoy the conference. And again, Damien and I are here if you need any help. Shoot us an email if you need anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank and you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Ciao.